free. Um, I'm part of a group. <laughs> part of a group. <laughs> group. Just a group. Um, I'm Arvind, and uh, here we are. I'm Lynn. I'm Ryan. All right, so first question is, uh, how did you guys implement your manual control? We used a, uh, we used a Wii nunchuck um, as our manual controller. It's got a joystick, uh, two buttons, and a three axis three axis accelerometer in it. So it was a nice, uh, a nice package that had a lot of a lot of control and a small, small low cost controller. It was uh, very different from a normal analog controller because you had to use I squared C protocol to connect the controller to the make board. So it's, uh, it was a bit tough. We had to find the right open source code for that and then tweak it around so that it'll um, work for us. So it was interesting. And then we had to, to uh, decrypt the data. The, the data that comes from the nunchuck is, decrypted, is in, encrypted, so we had to decrypt that, decrypt that data and then extract it from, it's a six-byte six uh, data package. It's not really encryption. Yeah. It was an X or a plus. X or a plus. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Not really encryption. We had other cool ideas like using a connect, you know, to for a manual control using motion sensors for that, but we decided we probably don't have enough time to implement that and went with the V controller, which is pretty cool too. So we could actually do rotates and going up and all like combined movements together, pitch, roll, and yaw. Yeah, so, so translation was, uh, yeah. was the joystick was used for left and right and forward back for translational motion. Uh, the C and Z buttons were mapped to up and down and uh, the drone yaw was mapped to the rotation of the nunchuck. Yeah, something like this movement would uh, take you, rotate the drone and then if you press the button up there it'd go up in spirals. So it's, it's pretty cool. And that was our creativity. That was also yeah. our creativity, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we attempted to pull off some complex maneuvers, but uh, it turns out that a rotating uh, reference frame for the drone can be, can be hard to, to figure out when you're flying it. So. We decided we were not good dancers too, so we just <laughs> <laughs> gave up on dancing or any of those ideas, so it's stuck to this controller. <laughs> Alright, so then uh, for the autonomous part, how did you approach that? Well, at first we tried to use enough data, like most group, but then when we realized how unreliable it is, and we were running out of time, so we compromised and decided to go with a bunch of four loops and just time it until it was right. So I mean, but, the, yeah. the nav data was good, like in one place. So like if you do it up here in the lab, the nav data would work great every time. We're like, awesome, we're almost done, right? And then we took it down to the basement to test it, and the drone just didn't ever stop. And we're like, <laughs> we can't use this. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a headache, but we just did a link set eventually, and you know, it wasn't, the best way, but you know it, it worked in the end, and it actually landed pretty close to the takeoff spot in our final demo. Actually, it wasn't. <laughs> That's because I pushed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't push. I stopped. I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, for the previous night, we tried that, and it works perfectly. But then people block it, and and well. We test it down there and we take into account all the currents from different different places like the air vent and the door closing and stuff. But then people block it so our drone was like way off. But it was so Site specific calibration. Yeah. yeah. So You're definitely. supposed to say it was fantastic. Yes, it was fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, I can't lie. Fantastic. Right. <laughs> yes, the best. It was fantastic. There we go. Yeah. Cool. All right, so then uh, in terms of the course, what was the hardest thing that um, Learning several new platforms, like working with the drones, the board. Yeah, Eclipse. Yeah, Eclipse, yeah. So it was, it was different from a normal class. It was a pretty, pretty intensive course. Yeah, yeah. it was definitely quite, quite like intensive. drinking from the fire hose the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very time consuming. Also, there was a lot to do and uh, we had um, everyone of us had like difficult schedules this quarter, so we couldn't divide it up like well enough to do like the best in the class. But yeah, we did good, so we're happy with what we got. And we learned a lot, so yeah, okay. we learned quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. 
So if you didn't have the drone for this class, what, what do you think that would be? I mean, for me, the drone was kind of a factor in whether or not I would take the class to begin with. Like, everyone kind of talked me into it because the drone looked really cool. But, uh, so it ended up being cool. But it, without the drone, it would be a lot more like not chasing stuff around, you know, because we had to chase the drone when it would fly away. That was a good opportunity to get off your chair and be a little more active. You know, working till like 12 o'clock on Friday and coming back at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. Was it didn't seem that bad because of the drones. I mean, yeah, I had fun playing with it, so it was it was interesting. The drone made it all worth it. Yeah, drones. I love watching Go drones. Go drones. Running around. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs>